Well, hi everyone, uh, today we are going to do the morphology of the mandibular first premolar. So the mandibular first premolar is the smallest premolar as compared to the second premolar. So the size of the mandibular first premolar is smaller as compared to the second premolar. Uh, it is a fourth tooth from the midline, first, second, third, fourth. So it is a fourth tooth from the midline. One, two, three, four. Four tooth from the midline. So this is a buccal cusp. It has two, this tooth has two cusps. This is a buccal cusp, which is large and pointed. Uh, and this is a lingual cusp, which is smaller and which is non-functional cusp. Uh, Sometimes the lingual cusp it resembles the cingulum of a canine uh, because of the small size. This tooth emerge into the oral cavity by the age of 10 to 12 years by replacing the deciduous uh, first molar uh, and the root completion is around the age of 12 to 13 years. These are the models of the mandibular first premolars. This is the mandibular first premolar of the right side and this is the mandibular first premolar of the left side. So the crown of this tooth is symmetrical bilaterally. The buccal cusp is large and pointed with a well-developed buccal ridge. On each side of the buccal ridge there are developmental depressions. The, these are the two cuspal slopes or cuspal ridges. The mesial cuspal slope or the cuspal ridge is shorter as compared to the distal cuspal slope which is larger. The mesial outline of the crown is straight as compared to the distal outline of the crown which has a slight concavity. The tip of the buccal cusp is located slightly mesially. You can see it is slight present towards the mesial side. The root of this tooth bears a close resemblance to the mandibular canine but usually it is shorter in length. The crown and the root they both taper towards the, towards the lingual side so you can see part of the mesial side and the distal side from the lingual aspect. The lingual cusp is shorter and less developed as compared to the buccal cusp. So you can see part of the occlusal surface from the lingual aspect. This is a buccal triangular ridge. On each side of the buccal triangular ridge, you can see two occlusal fossa, fossae. This is the mesial fossa and this is the distal fossa. In addition, there is a groove on the mesial side known as the mesiolingual developmental groove. The tip of the buccal cusp is centered over the root. The buccal outline of the crown is convex from cemento enamel junction to the cusp tip, while the lingual outline of the crown is straight, comparatively straight. This is the mesial marginal ridge and there is a groove known as the lingual developmental groove, mesiolingual developmental groove. This, uh, the outline of the root is also curved on the buccal side while the lingual outline of the root is straight. There are some shallow developmental depression on the mesial side. This is a distal marginal ridge which is comparatively higher as compared to the mesial marginal ridge. No developmental depression or grooves are present on the distal marginal ridge. A shallow developmental depression is present on the root surface. The crown is roughly diamond shaped. There is a prominent buccal ridge. You can see this is a prominent buccal ridge. The crown converts sharply towards the lingual side. The marginal ridges are well developed. This is the mesial marginal ridge and this is the distal marginal ridge. The distal marginal ridge is larger as compared to the mesial marginal ridge. The lingual cusp is smaller as compared to the buccal cusp. This is the transverse ridge. The, 
heavy buccal triangular ridge this is the buccal triangular ridge and this is the smaller lingual triangular ridge both of these ridges they form the transverse ridge on each side of this transverse ridge there are two fossa this one is the mesial fossa and this is the distal fossa from the mesial fossa there is a groove that emerge and this is known as the mesiolingual developmental groove or mesiolingual developmental depression.